Fedora 36 is finally here, and with it comes the latest GNOME desktop, Linux kernel 5.17, and smaller improvements all over the place. It's a great release overall, and I can't wait to dive in, and in today's video, we're going to give it a look. Hello and welcome back to Learn Linux TV, your source for Linux-related fun and learning. In today's video, we're going to check out the full release of Fedora 36, which came out this week. And to celebrate the new release, well, I'm wearing a hat. And that's not something that I normally do, but then again, I don't get a chance to check out a new release of Fedora every day, so I'm really excited to check it out. But then again, I'm really not used to wearing hats, so I'm just going to take this off. And we'll just continue with the review. Like I mentioned earlier before the intro, Fedora 36 features the latest GNOME desktop, this time version 42. Linux kernel 5.17 also comes along for the ride, and there's smaller improvements all over the place. And actually, this might be the very best Fedora release that I've reviewed yet, because I found it to be very responsive, consistent, and just overall, a real pleasure to use. Anyway, through the history of the channel so far, every six months or so, three of the most popular distributions all come out around the same time. We have Ubuntu, we have Pop! OS, and I've just reviewed those recently, and now we have Fedora. Now, even though I said that these distros come out around the same time, it's often the case that Fedora gets delayed, and Fedora 36 was delayed a few times, so it's actually not coming out exactly when it was supposed to, but that's actually common. Fedora releases when it's ready, and if there's any blocker bugs, they're not going to just force it to be ready when it's not. So they're not really, you know, trying to stick to a very strict schedule. If there's a reason to delay the lease, they will. And I actually like that quite a bit. I mean, the way I see it, a distribution should never be released until the maintainers are absolutely sure that it's ready. Anyway, considering that three very popular distributions that all ship the GNOME desktop environment come out around the same time, then usually what happens is I end up comparing each release to find out which of the three offers the best GNOME release this time around. Anyway, the conversation around these distributions has changed quite a bit because while I used to consider each of them a GNOME distribution, as of right now, Fedora is the only distribution among the three that I've mentioned that I could actually consider to be a GNOME release. One of the reasons for this is that Ubuntu 2204, which I've reviewed recently, is a distribution that I can no longer consider GNOME because its implementation of GNOME is more of a Franken GNOME, meaning that it's a hodgepodge of mismatched versions and craziness that really doesn't reflect the GNOME desktop environment at all. In regards to Pop! OS, they don't even consider their distribution to be a GNOME distro anymore because they've even gone as far as to give their desktop environment its own name, the Cosmic Desktop. So basically what that means is that Fedora, this time around, is actually in a category of and by itself. Of the three distributions, it's the only one that features a true GNOME experience, so it really doesn't seem to have any competition anymore, at least not in that area. I guess at this point I could stop the review right now and just tell you that Fedora is the best GNOME distribution during this release period, but you know what? I'm still going to review Fedora, of course, because I want to give you guys my thoughts about it, and I want to show you around the new release as well. So let's go ahead and dive in. And here's Fedora 36 in all its glory. What you're seeing on the screen right now is a fresh installation of Fedora 36 on my studio PC. I've installed it this morning. Even though I've been using the beta for some time, I wanted a fresh installation to show you guys. And also, as an aside, when I say studio PC, I'm actually talking about a real computer, not a virtual machine, because on Learn Linux TV, I always do my reviews from real hardware, unless I tell you guys otherwise. First and foremost, let's talk about Polish. GNOME 42, the latest version of the popular desktop environment, is integrated so well in Fedora 36 that you could probably consider its implementation an art form at this point. In fact, pretty much every opportunity to tightly integrate GNOME within Fedora was definitely utilized. From the logo that appears during the boot screen, Flatpak support being built in, updates installable through GNOME software, as well as putting GNOME's developments and improvements front and center, make this distribution the one to beat when it comes to implementing the desktop when compared to all the other distributions that I've tried so far. Using Fedora 36 has been very pleasant. I found it to be very responsive, stable, and consistent and the polish just makes it all that much better. Now let's switch gears and talk about new features. And historically, that's where Fedora usually lags behind when it comes to other distributions. In fact, Fedora often lacks standout new features at all, and that's been my primary complaint about this distribution for pretty much its entire existence. 
For this reason, I would usually not consider Fedora the best GNOME distro compared to others during previous release windows, and the reason for that is because while it does a great job generally of integrating GNOME, it never really seemed to do much beyond that. Meanwhile, both Ubuntu and Pop! OS would not only give you the latest GNOME desktop, they'd also give you additional features that you couldn't get anywhere else. Due to that, Fedora would often be in a distant third place overall every time I go to review it. But lately, Fedora does give you some pretty good reasons to consider it for your laptop or desktop. For example, this distro has not only switched to Wayland for display support before most other distributions even dared to do so, and now even supports NVIDIA's GPUs in Wayland as well. And historically, that's actually been somewhat of a challenge. Recently, Ubuntu 22.04 also defaulted to Wayland with NVIDIA in their new release, only to strangely pull that back and revert it back to the way it used to be. And that change, specifically, was walked back after the distribution was released, which means at one point, Ubuntu users would be happily enjoying NVIDIA on Wayland, only to have that taken away from them right after updating. But here in Fedora, we actually have NVIDIA support in Wayland, and it doesn't appear to be going anywhere. Now, like many releases of Fedora, the new features in Fedora 36 come as part of GNOME 42. The latest GNOME desktop itself features some brand new apps, such as a new text editor, that's cleverly been named Text Editor, and that Text Editor replaces Gedit as a default app for editing text files. And this may actually confuse some people, because even though Gedit was the default text editor for a very, very long time, recently the GNOME desktop simplified its name in the menus to simply Text Editor, so for some people they might actually be under the impression that this is the same app, but completely overhauled. Actually, Text Editor in GNOME is a completely new app. The new GNOME text editor seems a lot simpler than gedit, and personally, I really like that. I just don't feel like a text editor needs a ton of features. I mean, if I wanted more features while editing text files, I'd probably just use the word processor. But anyway, the new text editor is simple and effective, and I like it a lot. Another new app that's included with GNOME 42 is a new terminal emulator named Console. This is also a welcome new addition to the GNOME suite of applications replacing GNOME Terminal, which has been the default for a very long time. However, for some reason, Fedora diverges from this in Fedora 36, bypassing the console app completely and instead using GNOME Terminal like it always has. Now, I'm not really sure why Fedora went as far as to implement basically every change in GNOME 42, except for the new terminal emulator in particular. So with Fedora 36, you won't benefit from having console as the default terminal emulator. However, you could definitely install console yourself if you wish. Now, I think it might be a bit confusing that the default terminal emulator in GNOME is now called Console, and the default terminal emulator in the Plasma desktop is also called Console, but there's no relation. The Plasma desktop spells their console app with a K, so at least there's one way that we could tell the difference. Anyway, when it comes to new features, GNOME 42 is a bit light on improvements that are either large or user-facing. Instead, the latest GNOME desktop focuses on smaller improvements, as well as behind-the-scenes changes to make it faster and more responsive. So while GNOME 42 isn't the most exciting release of the desktop, it's definitely a pretty decent one. Another aspect of Fedora that I enjoy is the fact that it defaults to ButterFS for the file system. This isn't actually new when it comes to Fedora 36. ButterFS is rolled out as the default file system three releases ago. But the reason why I bring up ButterFS in this review is because I feel as though I've taken it for granted in the past. While working on a separate video that goes over the basics of ButterFS, which is in the editing queue right now, I've come to appreciate the added functionality of ButterFS, such as, for example, its ability to create snapshots. It's really nice to have ButterFS in Fedora, especially considering that Fedora is a leading-edge distribution, which means that it focuses on implementing new technologies whenever it makes sense to do so. So of course, with that mentality, ButterFS fits right in. On the downside, though, the implementation of ButterFS in Fedora doesn't seem to be as well-rounded as it is in SUSE, but it's still welcome, and I'm sure it's only going to get better from here. So while we have a very basic ButterFS implementation in Fedora 36, I'm actually glad to have that by default. Now, one thing I haven't talked much about is the installation process. Reason being, the installer has seen some minor tweaks for the most part, but compared to past releases, it's relatively unchanged. Just like before, you could boot into live mode and test your installation, and then move on to perform an actual installation once you verify that this release works with your hardware. This process isn't all that different from other distributions, but it is a process that works, and let's be honest, having the ability to try out a distribution in live mode before you install it, that's almost like a Linux superpower at this point. Despite the fact that the installer for Fedora can't be accused of having a lot of features, 
it does get the job done. And after your installation is complete, you'll see some helpful screens that will assist you with creating your user account, connecting to online services, and more. So despite its simplicity, Fedora's installer is easy to navigate, and the welcome screens that you see when you first log in are definitely a welcome touch. When it comes to this release in particular, there's honestly not a whole lot to talk about. Most of the new features in Fedora 36 come along for the ride due to GNOME 42. We also have some new apps, like I mentioned. We have the text editor app, the new console app, although you have to install that separately. But overall, GNOME itself, this time around, doesn't really have a ton of new features. GNOME is also focused on behind the scenes tweaks and plumbing and things like that. And Fedora 36 also seems to be working really hard behind the scenes to give you a stable and integrated and very responsive Linux distribution. And when it comes to that, Fedora has definitely succeeded. As I checked out this release, I don't really have much to say other than it's very pleasant. Like I mentioned a few times now, it just responds very well. Everything is very tightly integrated and it's just, well, really fun to use. They may not have any killer features that are going to get everybody talking, but maybe the fact that there's not much to talk about might just be a good thing. I mean, if it didn't work or if I had some problems, some kind of issues with this release, then I would have a lot to complain about, but I really don't. When I mentioned that the installer could use some new improvements, I mean, I'm really reaching when it comes to that, so I think overall they did a great job. When it comes to finding a GNOME distribution of Linux, if your preferred desktop environment is GNOME, then you'll definitely be well served by Fedora 36. Its implementation of GNOME 42 is very tightly integrated. It's very smooth, the performance is great, and I really can't find anything to complain about. Now I know this review is shorter than most of my reviews when it comes to Fedora, but it's literally as simple as I'm making it out to be in this video. Fedora 36 is a very worthy upgrade from Fedora 35, and if you're already using Fedora 35, then what are you waiting for? You should upgrade right now because it's actually a great release. Now, if you've been on the fence when it comes to trying out Fedora, I think it's a great time to do so. I think the developers of Fedora should be proud of themselves because what they've done is they've created a very stable and cohesive GNOME distribution that I think you're going to like. Anyway, as always, please click that like button if you like this review and let me know what your opinion of Fedora is down in the comments below. I'll be interested to see what you guys have to say about this release or Fedora in general. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it, and I'll see you in the next video.